What up? This is Ramash King covering movies, TV, and entertainment, and here's my review of Peacock's new series, Pitch Perfect Bumper in Berlin. Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, ring that bell, so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. Let's rock this. Okay, just to give you a bit of context, was I a fan of the original Pitch Perfect movie franchise? The answer is, I was only a fan of the first two films. I thought the third one was god-awful. Some things in life don't deserve a trilogy, and Pitch Perfect was that example. And now that I've watched this new spin-off show featuring Adam Devine, who was part of the original cast, I've come to the conclusion that just like the third installment, this too is an unnecessary continuation. Trust me, the laughs are nowhere to be found in Pitch Perfect Bumper in Berlin. It's as if the writers are not even trying at all. Their punchlines and their riff-offs are cringy and unbearable. Some of the supporting characters are also creepy and pointless. The whole time I was like, so this is what passes as humor for these guys? Look, I got nothing personally against the actors and the creative team behind this project. Although it is weird that they chose to expand the story of Bumper based on a franchise that's supposedly designed for girl empowerment. But what I'm getting at is there's a clear disconnect between what they and what the rest of us consider to be a good comedy. Written and show run by Megan Amram and executive produced by Elizabeth Banks, in Pitch Perfect Bumper in Berlin, several years have gone by after we saw last him in Pitch Perfect. Adam Devine's Bumper Allen moves to Germany to revive his music career when one of his songs becomes big in Berlin. Okay, some few, very few positive notes. I think it's cool that they shot this whole thing on location in Berlin, Germany. I'm sure it must have felt like a nice paid European vacation for the American cast members, with their co-star Flula Borg possibly serving as their tour guide. <laughs> By the way, this show not only marks Adam and Flula returning to reprise their respective roles, but this also marks the reunion of Adam and Sarah Hyland, both of whom previously worked together on one of my all-time favorite comedy series, Modern Family. And let me tell you, while yes, the actors did their own singing in Pitch Perfect Bumper in Berlin, though they probably got some help from auto-tunes and lip-sync, but Sarah Hyland herself is actually the best real-life singer of them all. That girl for reals got pipes. So despite everything that's shitty about this show, one thing that it does positively do is expose Sarah Hyland's incredible vocals to the world much more than ever before. Believe it or not, the story actually has potential. Flula's character, Pieter, is now a struggling music manager who signs Bumper to help him become the next big European star. But their journey to success is filled with all kinds of obstacles and detours. Plus, Europe is a whole new ball game for Bumper, whose charms don't always land quite well there. Sarah plays Pieter's assistant, Heidi, who turns out to be more valuable than just assisting. And model-turned-actress Lyra Abova plays Pieter's strong-headed sister, Thea. So the setup is there because the story can at any time fall on the family dynamics between Pieter and Thea, and it can also fall on the romantic interest between Bumper and Heidi. All the while, these four friends are navigating their way through the tough and sometimes bizarre world of the Berlin music industry. But when you market yourself as a comedy, you have got to deliver. Because otherwise, you will lose your audiences within the first few episodes. And that is the mistake that Pitch Perfect Bumper in Berlin unfortunately makes. Now, I think a big part of that reason is that the show does not have an effective comic relief. You see, in the movies, you got Rebel Wilson. Whether or not you like her, she brings on the shenanigans and the absurdity when the rest of her team are unable to. So the absence or the non-existence of such bravado type character on this show is sadly sorely felt. And the writers also royally mess up with some of the characterization as well. 
Lyra Abova's Tia starts out as a tough love DJ who tells it like it is. She starts out as somebody who takes some time to warm up to and that's fine. But by episodes 4 or 5, suddenly her sparks just disappear. And she simply becomes an ordinary fourth wheel who tries to chime in but fails every time. And trust me, that transformation is not a comfortable sight to watch. Pitch Perfect Bumper in Berlin is a friendship musical show that gradually becomes more and more tedious with every passing episode. And get this, the writer's idea of a joke is to point out that Germany has free healthcare and gun control. Really? Jokes about how Germany is a better country than America? Well, that just makes us American audiences feel shitty. So even the show's attempt on social commentary humor falls flat on its face. I admit that some of the a cappella renditions are decent and they kind of soften the blow, but most of them are terrible covers that sound like nails on a chalkboard. Overall, Pitch Perfect Bumper in Berlin is a painful, excruciating torture session that's really hard to sit through, and I don't recommend that you go have that same experience.